Hi, I'm Scott Fresner with U.S. Screen Print and Inkjet Technology. We're webcasting live from SGIA 08 in beautiful downtown Atlanta. How many times have we been here? Uh, more than we can count. <laughs> Keep counting. I'm with my friend Rick Roth from Mirror Image. It is a pleasure to do this. And uh, you work on the show, though, too, right? Uh, more kind or less. Of. You're kind Not of really. and You're walking around I'm being here. a celebrity. You're signing autographs. And, yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> screen printing is such a uh, wonderful... People probably bring up one of the... Uh, the uh, it was a Wegland. What's the guy's name? Oh, Wegman. Yeah, the Wegman, Wegman dogs. Wegman. You know, yeah. You were, I think, noted for that kind of stuff. We did a lot of Wegman dogs. Rick has been in this industry maybe longer than me. I don't know. I'm no, 1970. 20 years. 20 years. Well, in 20 years, you've done a hell of a lot. You are a living legend. I know. You think you feel that way? No. No, <laughs> you really are. You are. You're the guy that uh, I think took it to a new stage, a new level. Softer prints, dark shirt prints. I always thought of Mirror Image as being the company that was on the cutting edge. I think you are on the cutting edge, by the way. We always did really work hard at what we did. I yeah. think we're always trying to push it. Probably should have focused more on money sometimes, but you know, way into the screen printing. You, you know, know Andy, you know Andy Anderson, of course. Yes, I mean, I talked to him once. He was like, you know, there's great prints, but, but not making as much money because you work on the craft so hard that you forget about the fact that you got to make a buck or two along the way. But, I mean, I still have actually some of your prints that I've collected that, that I thought were outstanding, and so uh, you're to be congratulated for that. Well, and you've probably won about a jillion golden images, haven't you? We won a lot of golden image awards yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you entered here, or is that... Uh, we entered a few pieces, but... Literally, we were printing one as the UPS truck backed up for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> for the second time? Yes. So I wanted to got away and come back. <laughs> I wanted to put on the uh, Golden Image Awards. How many attempts did you do to get here? You know, because you see these great prints, and you, and you and I both know that they probably reburned some screens and re-output some film and, you know, went back to the drawing Most board. Most of ours, I have to say, were just left over after production. Well, it's because you had it nailed, because you guys are good printers. But you run MHM Plus presses. Customers. Yeah, we're all MHM presses. And are you an embroidery guy, too? We have Tajima embroidery heads. We have eight heads. When did you, like, go to the dark side? Um, I think it's about three or four years ago. Really? We, do, we have a lot of union customers, and so we do everything. And you're a union shop. We're a union shop. And I'll have to admit that before this interview, I mean, this was set up, and we had some ideas. We were talking. I had no idea you were a union shop. We kind of don't trade on that particularly. I mean, it actually started that way. A friend of mine worked for the um, SEIU right. and wanted shirts printed, and the only way we could do them was to wear a union shop. So I suggested it to. Uh, my then two employees, and we unionized. You've been union all these years? Yeah, all these years. You really have kept a low profile on that. I mean, I don't think... No, I, I don't, I don't trade secret. on that. No, 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 I don't trade on that. Although we're printing uh, 150,000 Obama shirts right now that have to be union printed. And if he wins the election, I guess... Then, then we'll have a celebratory shirt. They will? Yes. That'll be like a million or... Uh, I don't know. Who, who knows? Dancing in the streets, maybe. This looks like old school. <laughs> Very old school. Know. You know, I, well, it's funny. We do all these, you know... 14 color simulated process prints. Did you walk in the mall? What do you think? No, it's not what the mall. What I like. Yeah. <laughs> what I like is usually something simple, one color. I know, but I walk in the Macy's or whatever, and I see this over the sleeve, and it's got to be a, have a skull somewhere in it, you know. Yeah, I don't think there's ever going to be an end to fascination with skulls. No, I know it just no. drives me nuts. Death. But to be a union death. shop meant then, what's it mean to a non-union customer? It doesn't matter. I can walk in and order shirts from you. Yeah, here. of course. Um, but if I'm a fire department or what? Yeah, fire departments care, a lot of nonprofits. We print for Amnesty International, Students for Free Tibet, Oxfam. Why do, you have to be, why do you have to be union for that? Well, that's sort of the only certification that you're treating your labor well. You right. know, there's a lot of people can say things or okay. not, right. but that's sort of the proof. You have a contract. People are protected. So you know, when people are talking about fair trade, what says that it's fair trade? There's no standard for that. And really, any kind of thing that people might say about how they treat their people, the only way to really prove it is if someone speaks up is protected by a union. Right. So it's sort of the only certification there is in, in a way, although the certification comes from the labor end, not the management right. end. But do they have to buy union? In their case, like Amnesty International, they would prefer to buy union. They prefer. Oxfam, I think, uh, only buys union. Uh, but uh, a lot of unions uh, have to have union. Yeah, a union have to have, would have to buy union. And there's a lot of places, a lot of... Um, a lot of politicians, Green Party and Democratic okay. Party politicians, insist on union made. Is that how you got the Obama job? It, it is how we got the Obama job. I mean, I'm job. guessing there must be a lot of printers not union doing Obama, but may, maybe they're, they're no, doing their the own. No, the official Obama ones have to be So union. the rest would be a bootleg or yes. whatever? Yep. Okay. Or some other circumstance. But the campaign shirts, these are actually for moveon.org. Right, okay. But um, 
They'll, we're also printing campaign shirts. They have to be union printed. No, I'm guessing you're wearing the shirt, but uh, is that, that is that showing us your p political? <laughs> we're going to go there. Right? My political <laughs> persuasion is way further left than Obama. Oh, oh it is. Yeah. This is okay, though. This is safe. Then. As a business owner, I don't think that's that common. But yeah, you know, I'm uh, pretty left wing. I I guess you'd have to say. Now, in the world of screen printers, how many are union? Two percent, one percent. I mean, that's less. probably two percent or less. Yeah, you know, a lot of people have this image like you can't get rid of somebody. I've had no problem firing anybody. You can still. You have to just do it. No, you have the to. You way. have to be fair. Yeah. Basically, it comes down to being fair. That you have to go through a process. You got to treat everybody fairly. Everybody's got to be treated somewhat the same. You can't pay, play favorites. Right. And um, are wages higher than you think? Wages or? wages are a little higher, but you know. A union protects somebody so they'll stay working for me because mm -hmm. they know they have job protection. Right. And to do the kind of work we do, I need people to stay with me. Right. So that kind of protection just is an added benefit and actually helps That's me a great, maintain I mean, really, people. Because uh, your kind of work requires a guy. You can't go to the guy every summer and then no. in the wintertime fire the guy. No. No. So how have you kept on the cutting edge? Just doing lots of test prints and screwing around with stuff and trying different yeah. techniques? I think also a lot of it's about sort of the, maybe the same reason I have a union. It's about respect. If you respect your people, you let them go. Right. And if they have an idea, you let them run with it. And sometimes they're going to fail. But, you know, that's the only way to come up with something new. So do you have, like, your ace guy that's your go-to guy? Well, it's funny. I have my ace in the hole, which is uh, a guy that did work for me but still helps us out. Right. And uh, he works for an ink company. He works for Rutland now. Okay. But um, and then I have my guy who... Originally came to Mirror Image to help me sand the floors when we moved. <laughs> I have uh, 20,000 square feet of maple floors, and we sanded them. And he was a great worker, so I hired him, and he Put just him on a press? Put him on a press, and now he runs the whole shop. Right. So how big is your shop now? Um, we have four automatics. Okay. And um, we have about 30,000 square feet. Okay. How many employees do you have? We have, I think, right now about 28. And is it somewhat seasonal? I mean, you have your key guys, but... Uh, it comes and goes, but it's not seasonal. In other words, it's not predictable. Right, yeah. We uh, we have national c clients, so we don't really like summer or winter goes bad. It's not right. like that. But the work seems to come and go more okay. than anyone would like. In is, it, is there a lot of contract? or We do a mix of contract and, and custom. Okay. So if I walk into a department store today, what would I see if you're um, if you Skulls and over the sleeve. Yeah, and, yeah. right. Um, we print for Academics. They're a big urban brand. We print a lot of their stuff, all their difficult stuff. They're in a lot of like, a lot of urban stores, I right. guess you call them. And we were printing Reebok. We're not doing that anymore, but we do a lot of Sam Adams shirts. Do you really? Okay. That's so, we'll see, so people see your stuff. They just don't know because you're a co as a contract printer. They wouldn't know. If I'm walking around. You know your I stuff. I usually see something. Yeah, you go, that's, that's my stuff. If I walk around for a day and I get out of the shop, I see a shirt we printed. Does that ever happen? That I get out of the shop. No, <laughs> yeah, right. Seems like it. No, I do a lot of other things. All right, all right. Well, actually, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Have we covered enough on the unions? How does the shop become union, though? It has to come from the workers, and um, you got to find a what union. You, but I mean, really, I mean, uh, the the owner doesn't say we want to unionize. The the workers got to, um, you know, join a union. But if I was a screener and I wanted to do firemen or policemen shirts or whatever, you'd have to encourage your workers to join a union. Really? Yeah. So I guess I did. And what what's the union? Ours is the United Auto Workers, but it could be any number of unions. I'm <laughs> it doesn't I'm have to be. I'm a lot of them have different kinds of printers. Or in our case, they were doing UAW was organizing small shops. They have day daycares. A lot of them cover lots of kinds of. I businesses. had no idea. I mean, I'm thinking if I'm a United Auto Worker guy, I'm probably in I Detroit. Know. You know, and uh, so it could be. Uh, uh, there could be other. U I mean, yes. other unions in this industry. In general, it's the graphic. I forget what it's called. Graphic Printers Union. I don't know. Something like that. GPU. It's part of uh, some other union anyway. And then it's Unite, which is uh, usually sewing. But I think right. some printers are that. So if you want to become union, you tell your workers you want to become union, and you encourage them to, who do they call? The United Auto they Workers? Would, yeah, the UAW? sure. Sure. Do they or really? find some other shop that's unionized already. The Communication Workers of America. That's yeah.